In this video, I suggest avoiding something. I wouldn't recommend this inverter. Take advantage of the 666 watt hours party piece and plug something in. It's Da Vinci time. So we've tested quite a few portable power options on this channel and although they offer flexibility and that grab and go power when you need it most, generally they're not upgradable or expandable in any way. So I wanted to try and bridge the gap so that you can expand battery capacity to make the most out of when the sun shines and also go off grid for longer. So I made a list of wants and needs and first on the list was expanding the battery capacity of my solar generators while still remaining portable. So next up I wanted something that could still be used in its own right and not just for charging solar generators. So next on the list was a battery chemistry with a long cycle life, so I opted for lithium iron phosphate. Next up was something that was reasonably priced and wouldn't break the bank like some of the options out there. And finally a non-DIY option, although I'll be starting my first DIY build soon. So after looking around for a while there were a lot of drop-in battery options available as in the one that's being shown on screen at the moment but nothing that really fit the bill about being portable. So this led me to the case battery I found on AliExpress. Now one problem that people might have with using AliExpress is the fact that it takes a long time to get delivered, but that's not really a problem and the fact that you do get buyer protection which is currently being shown on screen. And this covers if you have any problems and I've actually used the process myself and it works really well and it's really easy to use. So I've had this case battery now for about five months and it's proved so useful I've got another one on the way from China as we speak. And the manufacturer has also said that they've revised the case battery that you see in this video. So what I'll do is I'll make an update video just to show you what's changed when it arrives. So this is what turned up. So I've got my case battery and I've got a mains charger here. So it has one of these kind of plugs. So they include one of these adapters here. So it turns it into a three pin uh, UK version. So further to the short video I made about what's inside this case battery, I thought we'd just have a quick look around the case itself. So on the front, we've got the usual label here, which gives you the do's and don'ts and things to note. Let's have a look around here. So on this side we've got a couple of securing bolts here, we've got the catches here and we've also got a securing screw here, that all to keep the lid in place. Now I must say this handle feels substantial, okay, it feels like it's connected to something, which for someone as clumsy as me is quite reassuring, I can tell you. So if we look around this side, there's not much else to note on there or on the bottom. So now to the business end. So our main terminals here are the obviously the negative and the positive. We have a couple of DC 5521 outputs here, and these are both good for 10 amps at 12 volts a piece. We have the port here to connect up the mains adapter that comes with this, and we also have the battery monitor here, which is click it once, it gives you the percentage, click it twice, and it gives you the current uh, voltage between these terminals, and also for these ports. Click it one more time, and it goes to sleep. Before I start mains charging, I just wanted to cover off the power brick that comes with this case battery. And handily, it actually has the details printed right on the front, so I'm hoping that's visible on screen at the moment. So this is a lithium ion battery charger. It provides 14.6 volts at 10 amps. So that's about 146 watts in charging terms. So if we quick flip round on the back here. So we've got an input voltage there between 110 and 240 volts, that's AC, so 50 or 60 hertz. We're plugged in now and are ready to go. And as you can see, a light's come on on the charger itself. Green means the charger's on, but it's not charging the case battery. Well, it's not physically connected at the moment, so it wouldn't be. And when it turns to red, that means it is charging the case battery, which I'll show you in a second. And the handy thing about this is, is the fact that once the BMS has determined the battery is full, it stops the charging, which means it turns this light back to green. So when you're charging this up from a main socket, for example, you just have to look at the charger and you know it's fully charged and ready to use. So I'm just going to plug this in now and just show you what it does. You can only put this in one way because it's got a notch in it. So if you put it in like that, as you can see, it's turned to red. You might be able to hear the fact the fan has come on. And that's it. And then when it's fully charged, that turns to green. So when it comes to charging your case battery and you don't want to use the power brick provided via the port here, you can charge via the main terminals here. 
So this case battery has what's called a common port BMS or battery management system, meaning that you can charge and discharge via the same terminals. So if you're in an RV or a camper, you can use your DC to DC charger to connect up to this battery as long as it provides 14.6 volts. And that's currently being shown on screen at the moment. The next option is to use a solar charge controller similar to what's being shown on screen at the moment. That obviously allows you to charge from solar but you need to know that this cannot exceed 20 amps in this case because that's the limit on this particular BMS. So just to show you another method of charging from the mains using another power supply via the main terminals, I've just got my little power supply here. So as long as you've set it to 14.6 volts, currently it's drawing just over 4 amps and it's about 61 watts. And again, I wouldn't normally do it like this. This is just for demo purposes, showing charging via the terminals. So for me, one of the really handy additions on this case battery are the DC5521 ports right here. And they're good for 12 volts at 10 amps a piece. So around my home, I've got lots of LED light strips and they're mostly the 12 volt kind. So they need a power brick, which usually is plugged into this little control box here. And because these run a lot less than 10 amps, I can literally just plug them straight in here and they run for ages. So one of my primary uses for this case battery was to charge my other solar generators. But as you can see, there's no cigarette lighter output on here. So let's put one on now. So I found a decent quality cigarette lighter output cable here and they come with the connectors already on them. So I've already done the negative one. So you literally put the connector on there like so and then tighten the main terminal down. Good thing about this one is it actually comes with a 10 amp blade fuse in there so that's in there so you can clip that down on top so effectively now you take the cover off there and you've got a standard cigarette lighter output there for your 12 volt devices so now that i've added this cable i can effectively charge all of my solar generators now as if i was charging them from a vehicle so here's the first one I'm going to do. This is the Buden 384 watt hour here. So I've got standard cigarette lighter output here to DC 5521. So let's just plug that one in. A little light should come on saying that we've got voltage, which we have. So let's plug that into the input there. So let's see if this has woken up, which it has done. We've got the little battery symbol there, which means it's charging. So next up is charging using USB C PD, that's power delivery. So I've got my link on 12 volt PD charger here and that's good for 60 watts. So let's plug that in here as if we're in a vehicle. And then on the all powers units, you can charge via this method. So on this version, which is the 666 watt hour and also the 372 watt hour, you just plug it straight into USB C PD port and then that should wake up and start charging. Uh, that's actually incorrect what's being displayed on screen. There's a video being suggested in the top corner right now just explaining the fact that that's actually charging at 60 watts and not at uh, 69 watts as it's currently showing. So that covers off charging devices using USB-C PD. So I found this little travel adapter which turns 12 into 24 volts. Now on the EB150 the volt range is 16 to 60 volts. So this actually takes 12 volts here so that's a normal cigarette lighter output and turns it into 24 volts at this 7.9 or 8 millimeter DC output, which fits perfectly in the EB150. So let's plug it in and see what it does. And look at that. So that's currently charging around 120 watts. So this is fine running this with just one cigarette lighter output, but again, you're limited to 10 amps and 12 volts, so about 120 watts worth on this one output. So I wanted to take advantage of the rest of the capacity in here and also the amps it can run through its main terminals and charge more than one solar generator at once. So I added another socket. So there you have it, two cigarette lighter outputs ready to go. So in terms of the terminals, I probably wouldn't go more than three on here because of the amount of space you've got around here. And if you did want to go above that, you'd probably be better off running it into a little fuse box and then tapping off your 12 volt devices or adding more of these for using with your devices or charging. So now that I've got both cigarette lighter outputs connected to the case battery, it's time to show off one of the 666 watt hours party pieces and that's dual mode charging. So first off, I'm just gonna connect this one here into the standard DC input. So let's see if that wakes up now. Okay, so that's now charging at 52 watts. 
So I'm just gonna hook up now the USB-C PD charger here. That's plugged in, let's see what we get. So look at that, so we're charging at 121 watts, well indicated, so it'll be slightly less than that with the way this records that. But ultimately it's over 100 watts, so just using this case battery to charge this solar generator is a lot faster than just using one input. So when it comes to this case battery, I've mainly used it for 12 volt devices and 12 volt charging, but you can hook up an AC inverter like I've done here. So this is one I had lying about. It's a thousand watt modified sine wave inverter. And to be honest with you, I'm not a fan of modified sine wave inverters. And I think it's worth stretching the budget to get a pure sine wave, which is on my list to get at a later date. So what I'm gonna do is just use this purely for this demo, just to show you that this case battery works fine under load. But the other thing it's worth noting as well is it's worth getting a fuse or some kind of breaker like this. This is a DC circuit breaker, a 125 amp version, in line here so that you've just got that bit of extra protection outside the BMS. But what I'm going to do now is just show you a couple of demos and just show you what it can do and the fact that it can power AC loads. So here's the first test, have an 830 watt kettle here plugged in, it's not all the way full, but again it's just to demonstrate that this works fine with the case battery, so let's go. And you hear the noise of the fans coming on in the inverter. So it's currently pulling 750 watts. So even though it's an 830 watt kettle, that's what uh, the inverter's giving out again. I wouldn't recommend this inverter, but again, it gives you an idea for the test. So there we have it, test one complete and worked. So test number two time now, and it's a classic with a 2000 watt heat gun. This one has two settings, so setting one should work with this inverter, but setting two should trip it out. So let's go. And that's drawing about 880 watts, so let's leave that running for a little while. Okay, so let's switch it up to number two now, so this should trip the inverter. And there we go, so it's tripped as expected. We hope you liked our video, all the links you'll need will be in the description below. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. And stay tuned to Dad Vinci.